Hey, fellow gliders, welcome back. Today, we are going back to the basics and taking a look at relations. As you know, Glide first started off with the ability to create an app from a Google Sheet, but Google Sheets are not relational databases. They are just simply spreadsheets, and if you wanted to connect items in those spreadsheets, you had to use complicated formulas and so forth. But over the past couple of years, Glide has introduced this concept of relations in their apps so you can connect your different data in different ways. Now, before we dive into our app and start messing with all of our data tables to try to figure out what things relate to what, it's good to kind of take a step back and see the overall structure of your app. It's at this point that I tend to use the vernacular of things having things or things belonging to things. Um, you can also start using the vernacular of parents and children, right? To talk about hierarchy of data. So in our case, we have an app that has users, topics, and lessons, right? A topic has many lessons. Lessons belong to a singular topic. Just like children belong to their parents, right? Parents will have that overarching hierarchy, right? So when you talk about like things having things, when you're using that vernacular, those things that have, those are your parents, right? And if things belong to, those are your children. So in this case, the topic would have a parent relationship and lessons would have a child relationship to the topic. One topic has many lessons, whereas lessons, plural, belong to one topic. That would be a many to one relationship. So in this example, I have an app where I would want to display topics of lessons. So I have a sheet of topics and I have a sheet of lessons. And currently they are independent of one another, which means I could have a screen of topics. But when I dive into the topic, all I'd be able to display here is just information about the topic itself. Likewise, I can have a screen of lessons. At the same time, I can dive into a lesson and I would just see details about the lesson itself. But what if I want to select a topic and then see all of the lessons that pertain to that topic? The easiest way to go about doing that is creating a relation. So what's a relation in Glide? A relation is a specific column type that acts like a link or a bridge between two sets of data. In this case, I have topics and I have lessons, and I want to connect the two. The only way to connect the two is with a common identifier, a key value, an identical string value that's going to match between the two different sets of data. Now you see here in my list of topics, I have my topic names. And in my lessons, I have my lesson names. They don't match. So if I want to relate the two sets of data, I have to create an identifier that will make that match. There are two ways to go about doing this. Either one, I can specify which topic this lesson belongs to by creating a topic column. And then I can relate the topics to the topic column. The alternative would actually be to going to the topic sheet and creating a new column called lessons, where then I could relate the list of lessons to the lesson sheet. The first way is much easier by going from your destination sheet. In this case, this is the many that belongs to the one, right? So uh, starting with this sheet and then just specifying which topic these lessons belong to. So to do that, I would just create a new column. We'll call this topic. And then I can specify which topic it is. So maybe this is topic one, right? And maybe these first three lessons belong to topic one. The next ones belong to topic two. And then the final three belong to topic three, right? Like this. So now we've specified which topic belongs to the lesson, and now we have an identical value to match. So to create a relation, we create the relation from the parent sheet or the one that's got the categories or the main topics. If you're thinking about your one has many things, what's that one? That's where you create the relation, All right? So here I can create a new relation and I'll call this typically relation to or rel, I typically use rel underscore, this can be whatever you want it to be, um, but rel lessons. 
and then type would be a relation column, which is a computed column type in Glide. So if Google Sheets is your base, you're not going to see this relation show up in your sheet. It's Glide only. So here I have a relation column and it's asking you, what do you want to relate? So here I'm going to relate the topic name to the matching value, which is found in the lesson sheet, the lessons topic. Right? When I do that, you'll see that now it found a match. You can see it only found one match because it's only looking for one thing at the moment. But we know that we have many lessons per topic, so I don't want to just match to one thing. I want to match multiple in this case, like that. Now you see it found all lessons that belong to that topic. Done. Okay, so now what I can do is you can display a relation as an inline list in your Glide app. If you're working in Glide pages, you would display it in a collection. So here in my Glide app, under my topic, I can now create an inline list. In that inline list, it'll try to find a relation that belongs with the sheet. Here it found my relation to lessons. Now I can name it something like lessons, and you see it, it's pulling in the correct lessons for that topic, A, B, and C. When I go to topic two, there's D, E, and F. And finally, topic three is G, H, and I. So mastering your concept of relations truly makes the magic appear in Glide. In this case, we did a one to many. One topic had many lessons. So when would you want to have a one to one relation? Well, you might want it in a variety of ways. So let's give our topics an image. I'm gonna add an image column here. We're going to call this topic image. And I'm just going to pick a random image for each of these topics, whichever one comes up first. Now, maybe we want on each of the lessons to show the topic image at the top, right? So now in order to do that, we would need to pull in the topic image on each of the lesson pages. So in this case, we're going to do a reverse relation. We're going to relate the topic here to the topic's topic name, right? So I can do the same thing. I'm going to create a relation back to the topic that it belongs to. So do a relation where we're going to match the topic name to the topic name in the topic sheet. It's only going to find one topic because there only is one topic one in the topic sheet. So in this case, we are not going to match multiple. With a singular relation, we can then leverage lookups to display values. So if we want to display that image at the top of each lesson, we just need to create a lookup. So we'll call this topic image. Type will be a lookup. And we're going to look up the image through the relation. OK, so you don't need to copy this image three times for each of the lessons, right? Um, you only need to do, specify it once here in the topic sheet, and then you can bring in those values to save yourself time. And now at the top of each lesson, I can then display that topic image at the top. Now, one thing to understand about relations is that they are unforgiving. They're looking for an exact match. So if at any point in time we change what the topic name is, it's going to disrupt that relation. So if I decide to change my topic three to topic four, right, you see that my relation broke because in my lesson sheet, I don't have a topic four, right? So it's always best to uh, make your matching value something that you know is not going to change. I highly recommend making those the row IDs for that sheet. So in each of my sheets, what I typically do is I start off by adding the row ID. So this is other row ID, which generates a unique value for that row. I'm going to do so in the lesson sheet here as well. Okay. I know that this ID is not going to change, even if I happen to change the lesson name or the topic name. So then what I do 
is instead of making my match to the topic name, I then use the topic ID. Now I want to be specific with this. So in my lessons, instead of naming it topic, I'll call it topic ID. That way I know what type of value is going to be stored in that column. And then instead of using the topic name, I'll find the ID that represents that name. So here I'm going to copy the row ID for topic one and substitute it here. I'll then do the same for topic two. So I'll grab the row ID for topic two and paste, and then topic three. Right? And then my relation to topic, I have to adjust that. So I'm going to match the topic ID to the topic's row ID. Right? And so now, even if I change the topic name, we know that the lessons are going to always have that match. Same thing in the topic sheet. I'm going to match that relation to the row ID rather than the topic name. Right? So even if I change the topic name, my lessons are always going to be consistent. Now at this point, I was displaying the topic name. I don't want to display the topic ID. So that's another use case for a single relation back to the topic. Not only can we grab the topic image, but we can also look up the topic name. So I'm going to duplicate this column. And instead of looking up the uh, image, I'm going to look up the name of the topic. Let's rename this column. And then I want to display that value instead. So in this video, we took a look at the concept of relations and how it truly creates magic within your app. We also took a look at how to create multiple relations from one thing to many, as well as singular relations in order to bring in values into a new sheet using lookups. So we truly only scratched the surface of how to use relations in Glide. So make sure you stay tuned to future videos where we take a deeper dive into using relations to make some truly magical experiences happen for your users in the app. If you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out to me at Twitter at rpetito or leave me a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.